Today, I will present the highlights of my thesis work on globally optimal stereo localization. In this presentation, I will describe the motivation and background of this work, our methods and results, and areas for future work. Robotic state estimation will play safety critical roles in society with applications in drones and self-driving. We need to be sure that our robots know where they are in the world. Stereo localization determines a robot's pose using stereo camera measurements of known landmarks. For a single landmark, the camera measures pixel locations in the left and right images. The measurement model involves the landmark positions in the camera frame, the landmark depth, and the camera's intrinsic parameter matrix. Landmark depth is a, is a third element of P sub C. The landmark position in the world, P sub W, is known, but the position in the camera frame requires estimating the unknown transformation matrix T sub C W. Localization can be framed as an optimization problem. Given n measurements from known landmarks with known point pixel correspondences, we minimize the reprojection error, the difference between the pixel space measurements and those obtained from the measurement model with pose t. Each w sub n is a weight matrix encoding pixel space uncertainties. Typically, this optimization problem is solved with local methods, such as gradient descent from an initial guess. We use an unconstrained parameterization of the trans transformation matrix t linearize the cost function and solve for the minimizing parameters of a left perturbation of the transformation matrix, update the transformation matrix, and repeat until convergence or a maximum number of iterations. Unfortunately, this optimization problem is non-convex and gradient descent methods may converge to local minima. For safety critical applications, we need methods for finding global minima. To prevent catastrophes from local minima, two related approaches exist. Certifiable algorithms that determine if a solution is a global minima and convex relaxations that relax constraints and under certain conditions find the globally optimal solution. These techniques have been applied to many problems in robotics, including rotation averaging, pose graph optimization, multiple point cloud registration, landmark-based SLAM, robust algorithms, the monocular PMP problem, and many more. Note that the monocular PMP problem is formulated using the back projection error, which minimizes 3D point distances as opposed to pixel space errors. No work has been done on globally optimal stereo localization. The key challenge of this work is that our cost function is not a polynomial function of the state variables, which is an assumption made by many prior works. We can turn any constrained optimization problem, referred to as the primal problem, into an unconstrained problem by minimizing the Lagrangian. The dual function of the Lagrange multipliers is defined as the infinum of the Lagrangian with respect to x. By definition, this function must always be at least as small as the minimum value of the primal problem. The dual problem involves finding the Lagrange multipliers that maximize the dual function. This is a concave problem, and the maximum of the dual is always at least as small as the minimum of the primal. In the case that d star equals p star, we say that strong duality holds. If strong duality holds, then to certify a candidate solution that's globally optimal, we can solve for the maximum of the dual problem, which is easy because it is concave, and check if a candidate solution cost is equal to d star. Note that under certain constraint qualifications, strong duality always holds for con a concave slash convex problem. Thus, if strong duality holds for the primal problem, then the dual of the dual is a tight relaxation of the primal problem. For an important example, consider a quadratically constrained quadratic problem, QCQP, with a quadratic cost and quadratic constraints that is non-convex in general. The dual problem is tight if the certificate matrix H is positive semi-definite. Thus, for a QCQP, we can check if H is positive semi-definite for any possible Lagrange multipliers to certify a candidate solution. The dual of the, of the dual, also called the primal relaxation, takes the form of a semi-definite program, SDP, which is a convex relaxation of the primal problem. Thus, if strong duality holds, we can solve this primal relaxation for a globally optimal solution. In the case that strong duality does not hold, we cannot certify candidate solutions nor solve the primal relaxation for a globally optimal solution. While the reprojection error in stereo localization is not quadratic, we can make a substitution to turn it into a QCQP. For a variety of landmark configurations and a fixed pixel space noise, this histogram plots the difference between the global minima and the minima from the primal relaxation. We notice a gap indicating that the primal relaxation is not tight. The preceding results indicates that the dual problem is not tight and the certificate matrix will not be positive semi-definite at global minima. 
To verify this, we generate problems with varying pixel space noise and plot the minimum eigenvalue of the certificate matrix. For globally optimal solutions, this value should be near zero. In the plot, blue dots are the global optima, red dots are the local minima. Although a gap exists between the minimum eigenvalues, it narrows with noise and the matrix isn't positive semi-definite within a reasonable tolerance. Taking a step back, let's compare our reprojection error to the back projection error. From the literature on optimal PNP algorithms, we know that the SDP relaxation of the back projection error function is tight. We observe that these two functions differ by a per point weighting based on the depth. Namely, the reprojection error discounts points at a large depth by a factor of the inverse depth squared with respect to the back projection error. This observation motivates an iterative algorithm for stereo localization with reprojection error, which aims to solve for the optimal back projection error at each iteration and uses that intermediate solution to find the depth weighting on each point correspondence for the next iteration. We begin with an initial guess, use this to calculate the depth at each point, which are used as correspondence weights when solving the back projection error SDP relaxation for the optimal transformation matrix. Then we iterate, using this transformation matrix to again estimate the depths. Notice that we can compute the depth directly from the SDP variable x. Finally, after convergence or a maximum number of iterations, we extract t from the last SDP solution and optionally refine with a local solver. This histogram plots the gap in the reprojection error between the global minima and the output of the iterative SDP algorithm without refinement from a local solver. But the iterative algorithm does not find the globally optimal solution all the time, and the main failure case is when there's a large difference in depth between the points. This is likely because when solving the back projection problem, the point with large depth contributes much more to the cost than it otherwise would in the reprojection error problem, moving the solution outside the basin of convergence. We evaluate the local solver, primal relaxation, and iterative SDP algorithm on problem instances with varying pixel space noise. If the local solver diverges, we restart with a new initial condition. The solutions from the SDP-based algorithms are refined with a local solver. For realistic noise levels, both iterative SDP and primal relaxation find the globally optimal solution despite not being tight without a local solver. It is unclear why these methods bring the local solver's initial guess within the convergence basin of the global solution. Comparing the time efficiency of each method, we find that while the primal relaxation solution time increases exponentially with the number of landmarks, the local solver and iterative SDP do not. This, combined with the global optimality of the iterative SDP method, make a strong case for its use in stereo localization. Tightening the primal relaxation in its certificate is part of ongoing and future work. The two main approaches are add redundant constraints to the QCQP, prior work has shown that this can help tighten the dual problem, or reformulate the QCQP substitution, which leads to a different SDP relaxation. We explored three forms of redundant constraints for the 3D problem. Redundant constraints to enforce the rotation matrix is in SO3. Constraints that enforce our substitution variables are parallel to the points in the camera frame. And we tried adding variables and new constraints associated with them. Unfortunately, none of these methods tightened the SDP relaxation meaningfully. To investigate tightening, we explored reduced dimension problems. We attempted a 1D version, localizing the camera on the number line. The measurement model is rational, resulting in a non-polynomial cost function. We found that the primal relaxation of this 1D problem was not tight, as indicated by the duality gap shown in this plot. However, we could find a redundant constraint that tightened the problem. Next, we tackled the 2D problem using the stereo reprojection error with 1D pixel measurements of planar landmarks and a 2D unknown pose. Again, the primal relaxation was not tight. To tighten this problem, we applied the Lasserre hierarchy. At a given level alpha of the Lasserre hierarchy, new variables are added consisting of products up to the order of alpha of the current variables. It also adds redundant constraints over those variables. For the 2D problem at alpha equals 2, the problem became tight. Unfortunately, applying Lasserre's is not tractable for the 3D problem because it's very slow. We can only solve 2D problems with at most four landmarks in a reasonable amount of time. Thus, future work will involve tightening the relaxation of the stereo localization problem. Possible directions include manually adding redundant constraints or making different QCQP substitutions, employing a sparse version of the Lasserre hierarchy which only adds a subset of the variables and associated redundant constraints for, the time, for time efficiency, and automatically searching within a level of the Lasserre hierarchy for the minimal set of variables and redundant constraints to tighten a problem, potentially benefiting other robotics optimization problems. Thanks for listening.